Hi everyone, this is the last video of the decision tree section. In this video, we are going to look into the advantages and the disadvantages of decision tree. Compared to the advantages, there are very few disadvantages, but let's evaluate each one of them. First of all, decision tree provides a very much clear cut visualization. The algorithm is very simple to understand, interpret, and if you want to visualize, we can easily visualize. We can read out the decision notes. Once we one uh, once we jump into the lab section, we are going to look into some of the ways by which we can just visualize our decision tree. Output of the decision tree can be easily interpreted by humans. Okay. Moreover, it's very simple and easy to understand. It's more like a uh, simple if else statement, which again are very easy to uh, interpret, right? Decision tree are used for both uh, classification and regression problems. So it can handle both continuous as well as categorical data. So that's one of the major peak points advantage of decision tree. We don't really need feature scaling over here. So you don't need to do standardization. You don't need to do normalization over here. Okay. And decision tree as it is rule based approach instead of distance calculation, right? We are not using this just as in KNN, KNN we are using distance calculation, right? So in decision tree, it's more like an uh, rule based approach, right? We have a rule and then we move lower. We have a rule. If the rule is completed, we move into some place or else we move into other place. So we don't need uh, really need feature engineering over in, uh, feature scaling over here. Then decision tree can automatically handle missing values. Decision tree is also robust to outliers and can handle it very efficiently, right? And moreover, it requires very less training time. Okay, the training period is very less compared to uh, random forest. It's really less. Now we have seen so many advantages of decision tree. Let's look into some of the major disadvantages too. The first ever and the most important disadvantage of our decision tree is overfitting. The main problem of decision tree is in a in a nutshell, it's overfitting, right? Uh, we have already discussed about what we mean by overfitting and we have uh, looked into how it can ultimately lead to wrong prediction. In order to fit even fit data, even the noisy data, it keeps generating new nodes, which will actually let us to overfitting at that. Okay. Uh, moreover, if there's overfitting, obviously we have high variance. Okay. It leads to high variance also. It becomes very unstable. Adding a new, new data node can lead to regeneration of the overall tree. Okay. And all the nodes need to be recalculated and recreated. So it's it gets really unstable when the data is overfitted. We get new nodes, the variance increases, it, it becomes highly unstable and affected by the little bit of noise can make it unstable, which leads to wrong prediction. Okay. And the most important thing is not very suitable for the large data set. If the data set is data size is large, then one single tree may grow complex and leads to overfitting. So in the case, we should be using a random forest. So that's about the disadvantages of decision tree. Let's implement everything that we have studied about decision tree into hands-on practice. That is in our lab section, we are going to take our data set and implement our first ever decision tree classifier. And then we are going to move into random forest. Okay. So let's jump into our lab section.